I'm joined today for a fabulous conversation with Dr. Wan Wu and Dr. Philip Chun. Uh, Philip is from Quarry, and Dr. Wu is from the Chinese American Cultural Council, Quarry, and the New England Alliance for the Peaceful Unification of China. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. It's so good to see you. Clayton, um, thank you for having us. It thank is really you for inviting us. It's an honor to have you here. I'm so excited that we're able to work together to present October's uh, exhibition of photographs celebrating American Chinese uh, history uh, and uh, hopefully inspire us to many, many future uh, decades of, of relationships between the two countries. Um, I'm really excited about how you came across upon these uh, photographs, and let's talk about that a little bit. How did you... Uh, well, we actually have done a similar expedition in Boston. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the uh, Boston Common and Chinatown, mm -hmm. very well uh, received. And they actually provided by the uh, uh, China's uh, General Consulate in New York. They got mm -hmm. hundreds of photos, and we just picked, you know, for this exhibition, we picked about 40. You know, That's very uh, nice uh, uh, picture. And I know, I mean, some of them are quite historic. Uh, you were just showing me a picture earlier that yes. we're going to share with our, our, our viewers. Sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about that picture. Well, that actually is uh, uh, President Jimmy Carter and mm -hmm. Prime Minister of uh, Teng Xiaoping at the White House. Right. When Teng Xiaoping uh, paid an official visit, I think right before they established the uh, uh, formal relationship. So that about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. This year is a 40 years anniversary. 40 That's why we are doing yeah, it. That's right. 40 years, I mean, go by so fast. You know, unbelievable. Mm. And U.S.-China uh, 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 bilateral relationship turned out to be the most important, mm -hmm. you know. So I think we are doing it it's, uh, for uh, educational purpose. Mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, uh, over the 40 years, both countries really have benefited. Mm -hmm. since we established the uh, relationship. You know, hopefully this will continue. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd like to bring this to uh, Quincy, the in the public library, let people in Quincy actually uh, have an opportunity uh, to let all this, to look at these photos. You know? uh, well, I certainly know that here in Quincy, we have a lot of people who have come from China in the last 40 years, and a lot of people with ties, uh, you know, who are here even, you know, I'm sure have been here longer than 40 years, some many generations longer than that. Um, but that, you know, when there's uh, increased, yes. uh, you know, when the relationships are better between the two countries, it, it serves those individuals and the city much better. And I know serving uh, the city and serving especially uh, the Asian members of the, of the city is part of Corey's mission uh, as the Quincy Asian Resources uh, Alliance, or uh, no, it's the Quincy Asian Resource uh, Incorporated, I believe. Yes. yes. Um, so, Philip, tell us a little bit about Corey's excitement and in eagerness to be part of this exhibition. Definitely. So when when Dr. Wu, uh, Dr. Wu been on our board um, for many many years. Mm -hmm. When Corey just established, um, Dr. Wu is a uh, trained scientist, mm -hmm. and so when I first met him um, for the last two and a half years that I've been with Corey, I just learned so much from him in terms of history, uh, the Asian, the Chinese history. Uh, as immigrants, both we are coming from Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot in common, uh, just talking about the old days. Mm. Uh, but definitely Dr. Wu has a lot more to share. Uh, he's, he's definitely a great educator and a teacher. Mm. Um, so when he came up with the idea, I, I was just like, this is a great opportunity for the community, for our students. Especially, there are lots of uh, uh, high school, middle school, even elementary school mm -hmm. uh, students to have the opportunity to see and to learn. Um, as a social service agency in Quincy, we would love to uh, uh, join Dr. Wu and collaborate with the organization to provide this uh, educational opportunity. And in the photographs, it's such a way to appreciate, and it makes it so real, and we can appreciate the history when we see the people that are involved. Um, 
We were talking earlier about the, the picture with, uh, with President Carter and Din Xiaoping, um, and he was, uh, Dr. Wu, you were telling me about how President Carter was one of the only presidents we've had who wasn't a lawyer. Uh, and which, engineer. <laughs> he was an engineer, exactly. Uh, and I was reminded just now as you were talking about your scientific background. Yep. Um, but we can read these things in history books. It's another thing altogether when we look at, you know, th these are people we're talking about. These are real lives um, that we know are, you know, lives that affect us here. They could be our brothers and sisters, our parents, our grandparents. Um, but they're people in China too. And I think when you see it represented and we we're reminded of that, 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 that base humanity, that, that it's so important, that makes us, you know, and brings the, us together. Uh, the photo before that picture uh, is actually uh, President Nixon's mm. meeting with uh, Chairman Mao. Wow. In Beijing. Right, yeah. Yep. The first time that, they, that the United States right. and China spoke in many, many 1971. years. 1971. Yeah. Right. What other images are you excited about? What other pieces of the history? Because there's so much. Obviously, in 40 years, that's a lot of ground to cover. Um, are there other images in the collection uh, that you're really yes, excited uh, to talk about? Yes, I think about? Uh, Muhammad Ali, hmm. you know, visit China. It was that before or after the rumble in the jungle? <laughs> I think it's uh, after. After, right. okay. uh, He was an uh, older man then. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also, uh, yeah, the, the Great War. Of course. And... Uh, President Reagan uh, in the Forbidden City, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of uh, historic picture, yeah. you know, yeah. So uh, I think uh, people definitely would, would enjoy them. There's a lot of a lot of reasons to be proud. Uh, a lot of reasons for pride in these pictures. Pride, uh, proud of yes. Chinese culture. Right. China right. Uh, proud of American contributions yep. and, and the relationship. Yep. Um, it's really celebrating, I think, both countries yes. uh, and our ability to talk uh, across divides. Yep. Um, yep. So. And I came to the uh, United States actually uh, 52 years ago. 52 years? Yes. Wow. So, so for 12 years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you don't see anybody uh, from mainland China. We came here from Hong Kong, you know. Mm -hmm. But after uh, uh, China and U.S. established, now you have more Chinese now coming from mainland right. than uh, any other place, wow. in, particularly in Boston. <laughs> I'm sure, I don't know if you want to share your personal stories, but I think that's fascinating. Uh, and I'm sure the reason that you and your family came here 52 years ago are very different than why you and your family came here, or are they, or is it more similar? I think we both came here individually. I'm just older. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I think we both came here individually. Individually. As individually. A oh, yeah. Both by yourselves. Yeah, yes. both by ourselves. Yeah. And uh, definitely a lot different. Uh, the yeah. time that when Dr. Wu came and the time that I came, um, do you want to talk about the Well, uh, the I went to uh, URI. I, I was the only Chinese student as an undergraduate. The only one? Yes. Wow. And I'm sure that's different today. Most of the Chinese students are graduate students from mm -hmm. Taiwan. Okay. But we can speak. I can speak Mandarin very fluently. Mm -hmm. So it's no problem. Yeah. And they have a Chinese student uh, as association. Mm -hmm. And they invite me as a member. You know. So... Uh, and then because uh, uh, mainland at that time uh, still uh, have not established a relationship mm -hmm. and essentially considered as an enemy, you know, commune, commun right. communist country, yeah. you know. So there was only, uh, people only recognized Taiwan. Uh, yes. Yeah. Taiwan at that time actually uh, represent uh, China. Right. So that's why uh, they have the uh, Chinese Student Association. Mm -hmm. And then uh, all the students actually are from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But they consider themselves Chinese too, right? You well, know, it's a shared history like there too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so, yes, as uh, unbelievable what happened over the last forty years, you know. Mm. And I think uh, benefit uh, both United States and China, but uh, more to China because China was uh, such a poor and underdeveloped country then. Right. But amazing. It's another in, story in, today. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. amazing what happened over the last forty years, you know. It really is. Yep. So. Yeah. And, but I was born actually uh, in Shanghai, China. Okay. And then uh, moved uh, to Hong Kong with my family. Okay. So, I so you went to Hong Kong with your family and then came over and as a student. And then came over here. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's the reason why, you know, right. in those days, you cannot go uh, directly from China to the United States. Hmm. So, but we yeah. went to Hong Kong first. Okay. And then I, uh, I saw uh, the opportunity uh, to come here as a student. Wow. You know. Have you been back to Hong Kong? I understand. I mean, in 52 time years, time. Hong Kong has as grown a, incredibly. As a, as a visitor, yes. Yeah. I visit Hong Kong as well as uh, China yeah. occasionally, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so because I uh, consider Hong Kong as uh, my uh, second home. Yeah. 
uh, United States is my first home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your third home? Yeah. Shanghai is my first home. Okay. So, uh, yeah. right. wow. But I have lived here longer now. Right. Yeah. In Hong Kong or Shanghai. And I suspect, if you're like me, I didn't grow up here in the Boston area, in, right. in Quincy, um, but I can't go home. I grew up in Colorado. Um, oh, okay. But the Colorado that I grew up in is different now. Uh, okay. Does it feel like that when you go to Hong Kong and Shanghai? Does it yes. feel, it's got to feel like a different place altogether. Different. Yeah. Could not recognize it. Right. Yeah. 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 We can't go home. We only have the future. Uh, yeah. yeah. Philip, so you came as a student? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So going back to, to that, you know, about the change. Yeah. So the exhibit it will be a great uh, platform to really going back to the time. So absolutely, uh, personal speaking, I'm always fascinated by looking at picture and have someone that, you know, lived through that time and telling mm -hmm. their experience. It just it, it's just going back to the time machine. Um, I think these pictures could spark a lot of conversations where definitely. people can remember, even if they weren't, you know, you know maybe they even weren't aware of, yes. of U.S. Chinese relationships through that. They can look and say, hey, when that was happening, this is what I was doing. Yes. Uh, how have things changed since then? Yeah, yes. there's a, uh, there are amazing photographs. Some of them are just, I think, stunning to look at, mm -hmm. but then they can draw out those stories too. Yes, yes. So it's very similar to uh, Dr. Wu. My father was born in China mm -hmm. and moved to Hong Kong and uh, he met my mom, and mm -hmm. um, you know that's uh, the rest is history. The rest was <laughs> history, <laughs> and then I was born in Hong Kong, grew mm -hmm. up there, and then came to this country when I was 16. Okay. Yeah, and then I've been living in Massachusetts since then, uh, oh. since 1992. Yeah. And this is my first home. Yeah. And um, I don't have a second home. Those type of feelings because maybe I came here too long already, mm. and at, at that age, so. Um, but I used to uh, go back home quite often uh, mm -hmm. when I was in a, a private sector. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, really, I think this this work in the community work and the social service work is just a lot busy than sure. you know my previous life. So uh, when we have time, I, I would love to go with Dr. Wu, and we'll bring you along. Would you come with us? I would love to go. With yeah. You. So, yeah. but um, the biggest difference, though, now he is his own boss. Before he got boss. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So more independent. Right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, which means you, you just, when you say you have no boss, you have a lot more bosses, I think, is how that works. <laughs> totally, totally. That's kind of how life is. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I'm super excited to have this exhibit. It's going to be up all of October. Uh, we're going to have a reception, uh, so we encourage yes. everybody to come to the reception and celebrate uh, this history and come by and see the library uh, and come by and see the exhibit and all these photographs and hopefully just talk with each other uh, and remember where we've been and, and we can think about where we can go and, and think about this peaceful unification and how we can bring people together. Yes, um, it's and wonderful. I will try to uh, drop by here uh, and then uh, explain the picture, you know, uh, during this time. Great. Not all the time, some of the time. When you can. I do have a full time job. Well, you're always welcome. We'd <laughs> okay. love to have you here. Thank you so much for coming and thank yep. you for talking with me thank today. You, yep. Thank you, Clay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yep. Please come by the library and celebrate the 40 years of Chinese US relations uh, with the photo exhibit that will be up all of October. I look forward to seeing you in the library. <laughs>